I lift my voice to worship you, O oh, my soul, rejoice, take joy, my King, in what you hear, let it be a and people don't even understand it. Thank you for that. God, we thank you that you are an ever-present help in every time of trouble. God, we're mindful of just who you are, how awesome you are, how magnificent you are. God, your omnipotent presence in this place. God, would you move from pew to pew God, that we will have an encounter with you today. God, let this not just be something that we do on a Sunday morning because it's what we do on Sunday mornings. God, would you move in this place today? God, we're thankful for your word. Thankful, God, because it provides clarity for us. God, because it gives us some instruction, God. We're thankful, God, for the men servant that you chose to stand behind the sacred desk to give us simply those, oh God. So would you give us ears to hear you like we've not heard you before? God, would your word come alive for us today? God, would you do truly a new thing in this place? Because you said whatever we ask for, God, whatever we pray for, God, if we do so in your name, God, your, your word tells us that you will perform it, God. And so we're thankful we wait with anticipation today with what you have for us. But even, God, as we sit and we await with anticipation, would you remove every earthly and worldly care from us? Because there are a lot, God, waiting on our hearts. But God, you are mightier than every weight that is upon us. And so we cast our cares upon you, God, because you care for us. Would you allow us to sit just to sit at your feet today? God, let us hear from you today. But even so, God, we're mindful that we have sinned. And so would you, would you forgive us, God? Please, Jesus, do that for us. Wash us white as snow, that our praise and our sacrifice be a sweet fragrance unto you today. God, we only want you to have your way. 
God, truly your will would be done in this place. And we really will be careful to give you the glory and the honor and the praise. Would you equip us, God, not just to be hearers of this word, God, but doers also, but to share the good news that Jesus and he alone, he alone saves. God, we give you honor and praise in this place today. For it is in no other name other than the matchless, mighty name of Jesus we pray today. Amen. 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 How would you have your way today? Family, good morning. And welcome into the house of the Lord. Yeah, it is good to see um, each and every one of you in the house of the Lord. I really understand what a privilege it is that we have because I recognize that not everybody gets to do it like we get to do it. And we serve an awesome and a mighty God that we get to do that freely. And so if you're joining us this morning by Facebook, wherever you are, we pray that you have a joyful time with us this morning. And we greet you um, today. And we know that God has something great and in store for us. He never disappoints. Amen. Yeah, he never. And so I know that we're going to have a good time in the Lord. And so I just want us to have a, a fruitful, a fruitful time in the Lord. And we're not going to delay the word of the, the Lord. We're actually going to get passed up a little earlier this morning, give him a little bit of extra time because I know it's something extra, extra special um, this morning. No pressure at all, sir. None at all. I just know that it's a good word because it's God's word. That's what I know. And so we're just going to say, God, your love is greater than life itself. And as we do that, we're going to prepare our hearts for the word of the Lord this morning. <clears throat> Your love, O oh Lord.
Your love, O oh Lord, is greater than life itself. Your love, O oh Lord, is greater than life itself. You are my greatest treasure. You are my Thank you, Sister Chardonnay. No pressure at all. No pressure at all. Good morning, everybody. Praise God. Great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Yeah, great is he. And also greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. I count it a privilege to be standing here again. Uh, and we are at, I believe, the sixth installment of God's Call to Wisdom. And uh, the title of this message, as we branch out and go in a little deeper, I believe, and branch out from the book of Proverbs for a moment, is Wisdom's Call to Christ. God's Call to Wisdom wisdom's call to Christ and may I direct your attention this morning to the book of first Corinthians the book of first Corinthians chapter 1 and we will read from verse 21 down to verse 30 it's good to see you this morning I hope you're as happy to see me as I am to see you Amen. But I'm, I'm happy when I stand here and uh, see all your faces and experience the fellowship that is, I believe, so rich um, of what God is doing. Amen. And uh, I can't wait to get here on Sunday mornings. I can't wait to get here. Are you in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, beginning at verse 21? For when the world with all its earthly wisdom failed to perceive and recognize and know God by means of its own philosophy, God in his wisdom was pleased through the foolishness of preaching, salvation procured by Christ and to be had through him to save those who believe who clung to and trusted in and relied on him. For while Jews demandingly ask for signs and miracles and Greeks pursue philosophy and wisdom, Paul says we preach Christ, the Messiah, crucified, preaching which to the Jews is a scandal and an offensive stumbling block that springs a snare or trap. And to the Gentiles, it is absurd and utterly unphilosophical nonsense. But to those who are called, Jew or Greek, Gentile, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. I want to read that again. But to those who are called, no matter, no matter what side you are on, um, ethnically, racially, don't matter. If you're called, you're called. But to those who are called, whether Jew or Greek, Christ is the power of God and the wisdom of God. This is because the foolish thing that has its source in God is wiser than men. And the weak thing that springs from God is stronger than men. For simply consider your own call, brethren. Not many of you were considered to be wise according to human estimates and standards. 
not many influential and powerful, not many of high and noble birth. No, for God selected, deliberately chose what in the world is foolish to put the wise to shame and what the world calls weak to put the strong to shame. And God also selected, deliberately chose what in the world is lowborn and insignificant and branded and treated with contempt, even the things that are nothing, that he might depose and bring to nothing the things that are, so that no mortal man should boast in his presence, so that no mortal man should have pretense for glorying and boasting in the presence of God. But it is from him that you have your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom from God, revealed to us a knowledge of the divine plan of salvation previously hidden, manifesting itself as our righteousness, thus making us upright and putting us in right standing with God and our consecration, making us pure and holy, and our redemption, providing our ransom from eternal penalty from sin. Thus ends the reading this morning. I come to you this morning uh, primarily at the beginning of this message by just asking a general but yet specific question, and it would be this. How do we describe and or fathom the love of God? It's simply amazing. It's simply incredible. But unfortunately, for those who have never experienced the love of God, that is found in Christ because that's where the love of God is demonstrated and manifests in the person and in the work of Jesus Christ. Even for what we may call or deem or term a seasoned believer, we still live in awe and find the words hard to find. Actually, to be very honest, it's impossible to find the words to describe. So, but the question came up in my mind, how do you describe or how do you fathom the love of God that was and is still produced and displayed by and through the workings of God? You see, the same way that the people in the first century were saved, nothing's changed. We're saved by grace through faith. Not of works that any man should boast. And, and so there's no difference from what happened uh, on the day of Pentecost when over 3,000 people were saved. The Bible says they came by faith and they were saved by grace. It still happens the same way today. It's still just as dynamic if you truly believe. If you truly believe, I'm telling you, it's going to affect your life. And as you progress and as you get into the word and into fellowship and into your private worship of God, I tell you, it's going to affect your life. You're going to be different. And uh, you make no apology for being different. And Paul says that we ought to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So we see all this and we understand that it is by and through the workings of God summed up in the statement, the wisdom of God. In human terms, nobody that would send his son to death would be described as being wise. It just, in human terms, it just don't add up. It's not logical. And in many cases, it would not be acceptable that you would send your son 
to go to a cruel cross. But the, the wisdom of God in putting flesh on his son or on himself and sending him to the cross. Watch this now. This, this is good. That the whole world through him might be saved. They just have to look in awe. Last, last evening, uh, First Lady and I were coming from St. George's and we looked over on the west and saw that sunset. Y'all saw it? Oh, y'all go sleep early? It's okay. <laughs> but we, we saw the sunset and, you know, the, she wanted to stop and take pictures and then there was this lady from America who was, uh, had an Airbnb down by... Um, St. Regis coming through that little small beach down there. I can't even call his name. Tobacco Bay. Sorry. And, um, you know, First Lady told me, I'm not, she wanted to take pictures of us. And, you know, First Lady told me, I ain't dressed right. You know how you girls do. I said, come on, girl, what are you talking about? And so we convinced her, we coaxed her, and, and the picture came out nice. And, uh, but we were standing there, and she, was, she initially was just getting pictures of the sunset. And it was coming, were, I mean, the cloud formation, and um, uh, the sun was coming down through the clouds. And I said that if you, if you wait a minute, the sun's going to come beneath the clouds, and it's just going to be the sun, and the clouds will be above. And so we waited. And you know what we did while we waited? Stood in awe. That's how we got to do with God. Because he's still working. He's still moving. He's still producing. And where he's working, moving, and producing is in our lives. And as we continue to understand the wisdom of God, all we do, and I tell you, it just enhances your life when you stand in awe of God. The Bible says how unsearchable are his ways and his truths beyond finding out. So it's difficult to fathom, but we go into him and as we worship him, he begins to reveal himself and then we see little by little by little how wise he is. How God works out all things according to the counsel of his will. And I say to you this morning, the counsel of his will is for our benefit. I, Brother Orville, I'm benefiting from this salvation. I, 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 I'm just enjoying peace like a river. Don't, don't look at me and see and think everything's all right, you know. Everything is not perfect. I'm telling you, I'm saying to you, and, and, and you know, we're all in the same boat. If anybody in here that has everything in their life all perfect, please meet with us back, back in the hall afterwards, because we want to hear from you. <laughs> we need to know the formula and the remedy. But what God makes things all right on the inside while things are being worked out on the outside. Jesus. And so as he works out everything for the counsel, through the counsel or according to the counsel of his will, I benefit that because I'm resting in his wisdom. Now, resting in his wisdom really means I'm trusting in his son, who he has made wisdom for us. Paul writes in Romans eleven thirty three. he says, Oh, the depth, how deep, oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and, and the knowledge of God. How unfathom, now we're talking about just now, how do we describe and or fathom? And Paul says that unfathomable, uh, inscrutable, and unsearchable are his judgments. 
But he says the depth of the riches of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. And look what he puts there, or the translators, an exclamation point. The depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God to do this, not just to do it, but how it was done. Because nobody else could think like God. Nobody else thinks like God. His ways are higher than our ways and his thoughts. And A.W. Tozer, you hear me say, read about him quite a lot. He says God's thoughts are quantitatively and qualitatively higher and better than ours. So the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God how unfathomable, you can't reach the bottom. You can't really get to the bottom of this. Just enjoy. I say to you this morning, I'm trying to get to the message now. I say to you, enjoy God. Enjoy God. Don't wait till you fully understand him to enjoy him. Enjoy the journey. Enjoy your walk with God. Enjoy the fellowship with God. Enjoy your obedience to God. En just enjoy him because in our humanness, we will never fully understand him. Why? Because he's God. He says, un Inscrutable, unfallible, and unsearchable are his judgments, his decisions, and how, how untraceable, mysterious, and undiscoverable are his ways, his methods, and his paths. Now, there are many who become frustrated when we don't fully and really understand. The Bible says that the just shall walk by faith. So when I walk by faith, trusting, believing, depending, and relying upon him, my faith increases and my worry decreases. Praise God. My faith increases. My worry decreases. When I know that his decisions, they are untraceable, mysterious, undiscoverable, and his ways, his methods, his paths are beyond finding out, then I am able to, as one notable, honorable pastor used to preach from this pulpit, Pastor J. Elton Thompson, he says, you got to trust him where you can trace him. So I say to you this morning, in all the humility that Jesus the Christ is more than a mere good example to follow. He's more than that. He's God. And he's God alone. He is a good example. All of that is true. But he's so much more than a good example to follow and someone I had to say this because the Spirit told me and I wrote it down. He's more than someone that we celebrate on two seasons of the year. He's more than that. And he deserves that. He deserves more than that. And he desires more than that. In many cases, Jesus the Christ has been reduced to the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. And so, it's tragic, but it's true. Don't you know that the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus get more press than Christ? I hang my head because it's a shameful thing. And he's become reduced to uh, what they call that um, advertising scheme. Two seasons of the year. And for some, that's the extent of their exposure. Twice a year. And for others, 
It's not even that. Oh, that men would know who this Jesus really is. He is the sole source. Watch this now. He is the sole source of everything that's good, that's right, that's perfect, and eternal. The sole source, meaning there's no other source that can claim those kinds of credentials. Only him. That's why he stands alone. That's why he stands out. He is the sole source of everything. Everything comes out of him. Everything comes through him. And everything comes because of him. That is good. That is right. Perfect and eternal. And it will never change. That's why we can depend. It will never change. He says, my word will never pass away. Heaven and earth going to pass away. Everything else going to come and go. He said, but my word. Praise be to God. He has so much more. And we're finding it out. I say we, I say us, I'm included with you. He has so much more. Praise his name. Life is so much better when you embrace the difference. Pastor, what are you talking about? When you embrace the difference, the difference from what I was before Christ to who I am now in Christ, I have to embrace that life. And some people fight and struggle with the change, not realizing that life is better and life is different. My thinking is different. My walk is different. My fellow things are just different and better. Is your life better? Amen. I think I should pause here and ask the question. Amen. You want me to send around the mic down this side? Is your life better? Praise be to God. What's this now? Oh that the soul yearns for and just what the soul yearns for and after that the soul becomes satisfied with what I've longed for what I've yearned for God brings it and over time over time of fellowship with him that's why you always will hear me say develop your precious personal time with him because that's where the stuff comes I mean, you, we, we, we listen to a preacher every now and then, uh, Sundays or Wednesdays, whenever we listen to a preacher. That's just a little snippet of what's available. I'm about to dance now. Because what's available is what I get when I'm by myself with him. Hallelujah. That's where the real growth comes in. That's where the real, the real wave of glory comes into our lives. It's when I'm doing it by myself. And then when all the people of the house of God come into the house of God that have been with the God of gods on their own and we come into corporate worship, oh God, everybody on the same page that I've been in his presence. <laughs> Who my soul so long has sought, Jesus satisfies my longing. All that the soul, turn to the book of Isaiah, please, would you? Because when we look at uh, the statement that I just made, that he is the sole source of everything, means I don't have to keep running to look for something that's going to bring me what I really need on the inside. I can go to him. I can trust in him to bring it. And, and here's the deal. When he identifies things that are not right for me, 
that things are that are sin to him and I accept what he says, then I'm beginning to understand that my soul is yearning for what he is bringing and the fight is supposed to get less and the flow is supposed to get more. Anybody listening this morning? I hope Jesus. Isaiah chapter 11. I'm talking about the soul source of everything. He says, and there shall come forth a shoot out of the stock of Jesse. Sounds like Christmas, don't it? Well, every, every Sunday is Christmas. <laughs> Praise God. You know why every Sunday is Christmas? Because we celebrate the Christ. Hallelujah. May not be no lights blinking. Amen. May not be no all to decorate it, but praise God, we're celebrating the Christ. He says this, he's going to come forth a shoot of the stock of Jesse, David's father, and a branch out of his roots shall grow and bear fruit. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And the first thing that's identified is the spirit of wisdom. Now, Pastor, why are, you, why are you teaching and preaching like this this morning? Because God wants us to have what he promised. And when you look at the first item on God's gift list, can I say that? The first item on God's gift list, the spirit of wisdom. I'm going back now. The sole source of everything good, right, perfect, and eternal. The spirit of wisdom and understanding. The spirit of counsel. Now, careful, all of this that was in him and still abides in him because this is who he is, but really now he lives in me. So if he lives in me, the things that he has will manifest through me. Oh, Jesus. These things are gifts to me. Wisdom is a gift to me. Understanding is a gift to me. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and of the reverential, remember we've been in Proverbs, the reverential fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. It's the beginning, the chief and the choice part. And Isaiah picks it up way before Christ was manifest in the flesh and said, when he comes, this is what he's going to have. This is what he's going to bring. And when he comes, watch this now, this is what he's going to give. Hallelujah. The spirit of knowledge and of the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord and shall make him of quick understanding and his delight shall be in the reverential and obedient fear of the Lord and he shall not judge by the sight of his eyes nor decide by the hearing of his ears but with righteousness and justice shall he judge the poor and decide with fairness for the meek, the poor, and the downtrodden of the earth, and he shall smite the earth and the oppressor with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. And righteousness, right standing and uprightness with God shall be the girdle of his waist and faithfulness, the girdle of his loins. Look at this. This is everything that's good. This is everything that is right. This is everything that is perfect. And this is everything that is eternal. This doesn't diminish. This increases in our lives. Praise be to God. And so when we look and we see that God sent this for us, our lives should be markedly different and better and when the soul becomes satisfied because what God brings into our lives first of all is peace Amen. first of all is peace and 
If you don't have it, ask him for it. Just ask him for it. We're his children. My, my youngest daughter has no problem coming asking me for the car. And she knows I don't want to give it to her. I'm telling you she knows. If, if you're watching, I'm telling you. And you know, you know what she does to, to, to her friend? She goes and boasts to her friend. My daddy cleans his car every other day. And you know what she does? Sports it. Don't hardly put gas in. Okay, I, 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 okay. <laughs> and in and through all of that, Papa's home in peace. Scratches on the bumper. Still, I'm living in his peace. When, 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 when these things are in our lives and God brings his peace, I remember yesterday we were all in the kitchen and, and um, it gets noisy in the kitchen. They, they talking and this and that. And my, my wife was saying, because Kalasia had her um, um, night of elegance yesterday. And, you know, she got three, three adult aunties and, 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 and Nana. And, and, and um, so they're, they're fixing her up and, you know, nice, uh, what they call that, dress, a, a, almost like a robe. Had her own hairdo. This child is uh, 13 years old. And listen to me carefully. She does their makeup. I'm telling you. And so we were all there. And they started to reminisce about when they were teenagers. And the things that they did that they thought they got away with. You know, climbing out the window. <laughs> I'm saying... Lord Jesus, give me grace. This, cause this stuff is coming out now. <laughs> and and this, is, this is what First Lady said. First Lady said, I used to march up and down this house in intercession when you were in home and your daddy was upstairs sleeping. There are nothing I can do. I prayed before I went down. It don't make sense staying up praying. I prayed and I went to sleep. <laughs> and we go to sleep in peace, believing. Now, mamas, you're going to stay up. I, there's about five to one women in here than, than men. And I know you, I know you, mamas, stay up. But my Bible tells me, this is for you, mamas. That he neither slumbers nor sleeps. My, my philosophy is, why both of us going to stay up? <laughs> if he's up, and my, oh yes sir, and my Bible tells me that he sits above the circle of the earth. And so if he's sitting above the circle of the earth, and he's observing, and I'm praying, I've got to believe and go sleep. <laughs> this may help somebody. If you still got some teenagers or early 20s, this may help you. And even in the 30s, <laughs> we're still praying. The soul yearns for peace. And you know what happens when we find that peace? It translates into finding our purpose. God, why did you create me? Why am I here? What is going on? What do you want me to do? i got to hasten through this. We become satisfied. He brings the peace. He brings the purpose. He brings contentment. And I work on the conditioning. Conditioning is really uh, an athletic term that says um, I go through my paces. And I go through everything that I'm supposed to do and the conditioning makes me stronger if I'm looking for strength or faster if I'm looking for speed or flexibility if I'm looking for that. So, but it is conditioning that makes the difference. And so when God brings the contentment, contentment I work on the conditioning. Oh, you all ain't going to hear me this morning, are you? I work on the conditioning. I condition my mind. 
I condition my will. How do you do that? Through the word of God and through prayer and through fellowship with him. I say to you that the soul becomes satisfied with what it yearns for and God brings it and it's right, it's good, it's perfect and it's eternal. Praise be to God. I'm going to finish this thing. Through acceptance comes my assurance when I accept that he is king of kings and lord of lords and it's not going to change no matter what era we are in when I accept that he is the sovereign savior and he's the only savior. When I accept that and all the other wonderful things that go with that, then my assurance is built. My assurance that I'm sure that I know that I know that I'm sure. Yeah. And the reason why I do that, the reason why I have that is because he brings that through my acceptance of him. I'm saying to you, we have a mighty God. I'm telling you he's mighty. I'm telling you that with everything that's going on, I'm going back to the P word, the peace word, with everything that you might be facing, God's big enough for it. No matter what it is, with everything that might be confronting you or you are confronting, God is big enough to, and has enough peace in his storehouse. Hallelujah. For you and for me. Through my acceptance. I get assurance. And then comes joy. Then comes joy. You know, when, 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 when joy comes in the midst of your struggle and trial, you know you got something. You know you got something. It's called joy unspeakable. I can't even hardly testify about it. Can't get the words out. Don't have the vocabulary. Can't articulate what's going on inside of me. But look, if you could see inside of me, there is a joy that's flowing like a river. It's because I ex have accepted that everything good, right, perfect, and eternal is rooted in him. And I'm, the Bible says, Jesus says, I am the vine. You are the branches. And if you stay connected to me, what I have, you will draw from. Back to 1 Corinthians, it says, but it is from him that you have your life in Christ, whom God made our wisdom. Wow. Not only did he make him our wisdom, but because how God did it, the Bible says, God made him who knew no sin to become sin for us. That in turn, we might take on his righteousness. But it is from him that you have your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom from God and revealed to us a knowledge of the divine plan of salvation that was previously hidden, manifesting itself as our righteousness, thus making us upright and putting us in right standing with God. Through Christ. When I put my faith in Christ, I may not do everything right, but because I put my faith in Christ, my desire is to please him. And so give me some time. I'm going to get it right. If my faith has found a resting place, not in device or creed, just give it some time. And I'm going to make God in us the hope of glory that God will perform and perfect in us and we have a desire to please him that's birthed through the holy spirit he gives us the desire it's a longing lord what whatever no matter what my aim and my goal my desire my drive my passion lord is to please you first 
And sometimes we go on worrying about our enemies, worrying about what people can think. The Bible says when a man's ways please the Lord. Don't worry about your enemy. He, worry, don't, and don't even worry about God. Just try to please him. He says when a man's ways please the Lord, he will make your enemies to do what? Be at peace with you. You better trust this word. Amen. Praise be to God. He made, it is from him that you have your life in Christ. New life. Abundant life. Eternal life. Watch this now. God made visible what we heard about and read about and had longed for. This is all of humanity. The plan of salvation was revealed in the word in the Old Testament. And the same word in the Old Testament became flesh in the New Testament. The same word. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory of as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. This may sound a little bit simplistic, but I believe if you check the Old Testament against the New Testament, that God has made things a lot easier and a lot simpler that I can come and trust Christ and I don't have to bring a lamb, a bull, a sheep, a turtle dove, and I don't have to bring it continually, continually, wearing out the pastor. Pastor's all tight, trying to get home, get his grease, <laughs> trying, to get, trying to keep his life together, and all of a sudden somebody shows up in the back door. I'm going to go. I need sacrifice for my sins. Today, the pastor, the priest can say, let's go to Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't have, we don't have to slay any lambs anymore. We don't have to put the blood on the door. Someone, not something, someone has taken the place of the lamb. His name is Jesus. I say he has simply life and we have complicated issues God says I want to straighten this out for you just come to my son God did not do or produce anything new out of frustration panic or confusion the Bible says if you look at Ephesians 1 chapter 4 that the Bible says we were chosen in him God didn't panic out of our um, do anything out of frustration or confusion. God had us in his mind, and this is mind-blowing and mind-boggling, that Dean would be in the mind of God before I was formed in my mother's womb. God knew me. Yes. Knew all of us, knew what we would need. Praise be to God and chose us in him. You didn't just show up here this morning. You were chosen a long time ago. How long you been fighting? How long, how long were you fighting? Amen. Your chosen space, your chosen place. God knew it. He says, you were chosen in him. Are you even in Ephesians 1, 4, he says, even as in his love, he chose us, actually picked us out for himself as his own in Christ before the foundation of the world. Not just after he made the world and said, okay, no, he said, before the world were formed, I knew you. I, this, that, what he told Jeremiah? He said, before you were formed in your mother's womb, I knew you. I knew you. I ordained you. I called you before the foundation of the world. Don't panic. You were well known a long time ago. Praise God. We just catching up this stuff. Amen. Thank God we're catching up, though. Amen. That we should be, watch it now, chosen before the foundation of the world. And the reason why that God selected us, selected you, please take this personally, that we should be consecrated, holy. That means your life set apart for him. 
And this is where the rubber meets the road, where sometimes people say, I don't want to go that road. No, you're set apart. Accept it. Set apart for his use, his purpose, and his glory. That's what consecrated means. And blameless in his sight, even above reproach before him in love. Wow. Here's the plan, and here's the prescription that God allowed me to hear and to communicate. Number one, follow him closely. He who walks with the wise will himself become wise. Follow him closely. The Bible talks about when Jesus was walking in Galilee and um, there were people around looking, you know, anytime spectacular things are happening, you know, you'd be feeding 5,000 and you'd be raising the dead and healing the sick and the lame start walking. People will want to know what's going on. And people were observing. And the Bible says that some people looked from a distance long as he don't call my name. I look from the distance. Just don't, just don't single me out. I'm telling you, Elder Ivan, growing up in the Pentecostal church, I used to hate when the pastor would look down at me. He going he gonna to call me. He going to call me to this altar. And I, every time the pastor would look down, I'd look down too. I, we, we, ain't, we, we ain't making no eye contact. Uh-uh. No way. No way. Uh-uh. We don't, we don't want to be following Christ from a distance, just observing. We want to be in the inner circle. That's the plan. Follow him closely. Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. Ah, woo, I just heard it. Christianity, following Christ, is not about remote learning. And remote living. The, the COVID pandemic did that. Oh, Jesus. And some people ain't recovered yet. We're still operating in remote. Follow him closely. Let your connection grow to commitment. Number two. Follow him consciously. Think on these things. Turn to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 and 9. Follow him closely. Follow him consciously. It means that I'm going to do it deliberately. I'm going to fight my flesh and think on these things. Philippians 4, Paul says, For the rest, brethren, whatever is true, Whatever is worthy of reverence and is honorable and seemly, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely and whatever is lovable, whatever is kind and winsome and gracious, if there is any virtue, excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think on these things. Make a conscious decision. Wow. True. Worthy of reverence, honorable, seemly, pray, just, pure, lovely, lovable, kind, winsome, gracious. And he says, if there's anything else, if there's any virtue, any excellence, if there's anything worthy of praise, find out what it is. Think on that too. Weigh and take into account these things. And he says, and fix your minds on it. Follow him consciously. I think that humanity is all the same. Not I think, I know. Because there are, there are thoughts that run through our mind. You know, we're just sitting down, as I, used to, as I say, minding my own business. <laughs> and all of a sudden, these crazy thoughts 
Am I in your camp, elder? I mean, just thoughts just come. And I've learned that you can control what comes because they just come. There's something about the, the whatever goes on up here, the thoughts come. You see something, and why, that dress is pretty. Those shoes are shined, they're not, they're not buffed or whatever. We make a, a thought process that goes through. You can control what comes, but you can control what stays. Yes. And he says, but I've got to make a decision. I've got to fix my mind on the things that I've just mentioned. And I'm telling you, that takes discipline. Sometimes I've had to get up and kind of shake myself and look out and then come back. Because the thoughts, sometimes they come negative and they try to drown out all that God is doing. The devil is a liar. Follow him closely. Follow him consciously. Paul says, set your affections on things above. The higher things. And lastly, Follow him correctly, closely, consciously, follow him correctly. Romans chapter 8, we'll finish right there. Romans chapter 8, look down at verse 1. For all who are led by the Spirit of God. 14, I'm sorry. Romans 8, 14. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. Everybody that is born again has the Spirit of God residing. And it's the Spirit's job and task to teach and lead. And high above all of that, it is the Spirit's job to exalt Jesus, to lift up Jesus, to make Jesus prominent. And so he comes, and when we are led, Spirit-filled people are not, is not isolated to pastors, elders, deacons, Teachers, it's available for everybody Amen. to be led by the Spirit of God and to give him glory for it. Amen. Make no apology for it. He says, and when the Spirit leads you, how is he going to lead you? Jesus says, when he, the Spirit of truth, when he comes, he will lead you into all truth. Follow him closely. Follow him consciously. Let's finish this. Follow him correctly. For the spirit, verse 15, you have now received is not a spirit of slavery, slavery to put you once more in bondage to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, the spirit producing sonship in the bliss of which we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself thus testifies together with our own spirit, assuring us that we are children of God. And if we are children, then we are also heirs, heirs of God, and fellow or joint heirs with Christ, sharing his inheritance with him. Only we must share his suffering. If we are to share his glory. But it is from him that you have your life in Christ. Whom God made our wisdom. It's just wise to follow him. Firstly, it's wise to accept him. Because you can follow him if you've never accepted him. But when you, ah, oh Jesus, when you accept him and he begins to speak to you, 
listen and follow. What's he going to do? He's going to lead you in green pastures. He's going to lead you beside still waters. He's going to restore your soul. He's going to lead you in the path of righteousness for his, his name's sake. And when you get down in the valley, can I march right on out of here? I'll march right on out of here. He said, when you get in the valley of the shadow of death, whatever is going on around you that's trying to rock your world and shake the fruit off of the tree of your life and go through all that, he says, when you get in the valley, you won't fear any evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they are comforting me. Then I look around and I see you're preparing a table before me the presence of my enemy and I thought that my cup was drying up but I look around and my cup still running over this is God's work I, I'm, go, I'm done this, this, this is the Lord's doing and God made Christ our wisdom that when we follow him it's the wisest decision number one that I have made and the decisions that I make to continue to follow him will bring glory to the Father, whereby we cry out, Daddy, Father in heaven. How come? Jesus says, when you pray, he says, you, you can't get to my daddy and your daddy unless you come through me. And now what has he done? He's made us joint heirs. Joint heirs, co-heirs with him. Father, we want to thank you this morning. We want to thank you this morning that you have made Christ to be for us wisdom from you, our righteousness, our redemption, and that you have provided eternal salvation for us who believe. I pray that this word would resonate in our spirit. May somebody take some practical application out of this that we would make our lives, oh God, more in line with you, that we would follow you, oh God, consciously. We would follow you correctly, that yes, we would even be courageous in our following you. May your blessing rest upon this house. I pray for everybody from the back to the front. If somebody's in the hall, someone or watch, some people may be watching by Facebook. Please, oh Father, don't let this word fall to the ground. But let it well up in us, springs of living water. We give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. We can't leave here the same. We can and we give praise and glory and honor unto you who sit on the throne and unto the Lamb. Be all blessing and glory and honor and power forever. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Praise God. Was it not? Amen. Amen. We're thankful for the word. We're thankful for the man of God that's obedient yes. to share that with us, that we might um, be able to have peace, live peaceably, and to know peace. God, we're thankful for that this morning. 
for the presentation of our tithes and offerings this morning. As we just say, blessed be the name of the Lord. Thank you because you are ever faithful to us. Even God, to watch over your word and to perform it, God, we're thankful. We're thankful, God, that even out of the abundance of our hearts, as you continually bless us, God, we're able to return a small portion of what you have given to us, God. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together running over god you do that for us so much so that we don't even have the room enough to receive it all and so god we say with these our tithes and our offerings would you have your way god would it go to the furtherment of your kingdom god that you would continue to be high and lift it up. God, would you bless it? And even those, God, would you remember who had it in their hearts to give but were unable to today, God, would you bless them beyond measure? Um, even for that, God, and we'll give you careful honor and praise. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. Come on, you can be seated. 